This is the time in our service where we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We take a piece of bread and a cup and remember what Christ did when he went to the cross to die for us. And as I was preparing this um, short devotional, I was reminded and have been reminded for a couple of weeks now about God's grace. Um, I just finished reading with a group of guys a book that we have on the book table called Long Before Luther. And that book traces the gospel through the time um, after the apostles before the Reformation. And so this was a dark time in the gospel's history, and it walks through that time and shows that the gospel was there. Um, That grace through faith was something that was held onto by many people um, within the church during a time where that really wasn't what was celebrated. And so that has been on my mind a lot, and I want to kind of touch on that some today. And so I want to open up our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible, um, there are men that would love to put one in your hand. Just raise your hand, and and they'll put a Bible in your hand, and you can turn to Ephesians 2 with us and look at it. This verse is probably very familiar to all of us. I'm sure many of us have it memorized. And if you don't have it memorized, it's, it's important too, because this is really a foundation to what we believe. Um, and so let me read Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 8. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one may boast. There's a few key words in that sentence that I want to look at. And the first one is grace. A worldly definition, the way that we use the word grace today in common vernacular, is just courteous goodwill. You may have a grace period if you're returning an item. You may show grace to your children by giving them a little bit of extra screen time. If you pay for lunch for someone, you may show grace by paying at that time. However, if you end up paying two or three times in a row with no attempt by the other person, you may say that your grace has run out. And this definition and use of this word in our culture, I think dilutes the word when we sit here in church and talk about it. We go to Grace Bible Church. Grace is important in our vernacular. And we don't want to let the worldly definition of grace dictate that to us. And so what is the grace that we receive in salvation? To understand that, we first have to understand the debt that we owe. Bernard of Clairvaux, which he was a priest in the Middle Ages, says, For what could man, the slave of sin, fast bound by the devil, do of himself to recover that righteousness which he had formerly lost? He reminds us that without grace, we are slaves of sin, fast bound by the devil with no hope on our own. Being a slave of sin means that we cannot not sin. We are bound to our sin. We have no hope of a payment that will break us from our sin. We are in slavery to the acts that only stand to divide us and further separate us from God. And where are we, who are we bound by? We are bound by the devil. This means that we are running away from God and towards something, and that something is Satan. And we are without hope. If we understand a life without grace correctly, we understand that there is no hope to repay this debt, to break from this sin pattern. No hope that in and of our own power, we can turn and run towards Christ. But grace steps in. Grace is the part of God's divine activity that enables him to confront human rebellion. And he confronts it with an inexhaustible capacity to forgive and bless. God is gracious in action. Think about that. Grace only comes as an action from God. And grace intersects human rebellion. Grace is inexhaustible. We cannot out grace. And grace is not just an attribute of God. 
It is an action of God. Put another way, grace is the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners. What means did God use to bestow grace? He didn't give us a grace period on our debt. He didn't pay for our lunch with an expectation of reciprocation. He sent his son to the cross to pay our debt once and for all time. Bernard goes on to say, therefore, he who lacked righteousness had another's imputed to him. It was man who owed the debt. It was Christ who paid it. If Paul says died for all time, then all were dead. So that as one bore the sins of all, the satisfaction of one is imputed to all. Grace is so much bigger than we think. But there's a second half of that phrase. It says, by grace through faith. What is faith? Faith is the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So biblically, faith is a complete, and tru co complete trust and confidence in the death of Christ on the cross as a means to save me from my sins. Complete trust. Not trust, but good works. Complete trust. Our faith is the belief that when Christ went to the cross, his death was the one that paid our unpayable debt. And faith is not a work. That is not our part of the transaction because it too is given to us by God. Look back at that passage in Ephesians 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is a gift from God, not of works, so that no one may boast. When he says, this is not of yourselves, he is referencing the faith. He says, God gives us the faith so that we can receive the grace. Jerome, in about 400 AD, said it this way. Paul says this, in case the secret thought should steal upon us, that if we are not saved by our own works, at least we are saved by our own faith. And in so, our way, of the, our way to salvation is of ourselves. Thus, he added, Paul added, the statement of faith, too, is not of our own will, but God's gift. In a biblical definition, what is our complete trust in? When God says we are saved by grace through faith, it is because faith is needed for him to bestow his grace on us. I like the way this is phrased about faith. It says, faith is opened up by the word of God. It finds expression through the Holy Spirit who is given and bears witness to the Lordship of Christ. So we are saved from a life that runs from or runs to sin from God by the grace of God that sent his son on the cross to die in our place. And we must have faith given to us by God to trust that death for our salvation. These are such sweet words. This is such a sweet thought. And this is so much bigger than we think. Anselm of Canterbury says this, Breathe again, though, O sinner, breathe again. Despair not, hope in him whom you fear. Flee to him whom you have fled. For what else is Jesus but a savior? So if you have this faith, please take communion this morning on your own. And remember, God gave us the faith so that we get the grace that happened when he went to the cross. And if you don't understand that, and if you don't have your faith in Christ, please let the elements pass by, but don't leave this morning without talking to someone. Come find me. There will be people over there um, that would love to talk to you about their Savior. Um, don't leave without talking about what is this grace and this faith that God bestows. Men, please come forward and take your elements on the own this morning.